Welcome to video two. Let's talk a little bit about responsive font sizes. Now when you're doing responsive design, you want your design to be able to adapt to different device sizes. And it's quite likely that you want your text to be able to adapt as well. For example, maybe you want the text to be larger on large displays because you have more screen space available. Whereas you want that text to be smaller on smaller devices, say a mobile phone, because you want to have slightly more information in that space. The way to do that is with relative font sizes. And the way I'm going to suggest that you do that is with something called M's. Um, now you've probably worked with pixels quite a bit in the past, and they definitely have their advantages. Um, it's nice to have something that seems pretty consistent across you know, multiple devices. But when it comes down to it, you have to understand that pixels are still rel relative to the device. Um, they're going to change slightly, um, and you're not really dealing with an absolute perfect size, even when you're working with pixels. An M is a relative font size. It's based on the context with where it is. Um, basically, M's allow you to be resolution independent. And this is key because if you go back to that idea I just talked about, if you want to have a slightly different font size based on your device that the visitor is viewing the site in, M's is an excellent way to go about that. In order to demonstrate this, you see here on the screen um, is the sample site that I put together. Um, if you've done my content management system course, you might recognize this particular template. Um, basically, it's a, just a tweaked template from that particular course. And everything is currently sized in pixels. And just to give you a brief overview, um, these files are all available for your download in case you uh, want to be able to follow along and actually do my code changes at the same time. Um, to give you an idea of the file structure, I simply have an index.html. I have a resources folder which contains CSS, which I have a style.css file, and images, which I just have a banner image. So I've kept this very simple and straightforward. Um, if you take a look at the CSS, it's Again, very simple. Um, we just have a meta information, we have a title, we have a link to our, out to our CSS file, and then it's split up into a couple different sections. Um, we have the title of the website in H1, we have a banner with that image, we have a navigation section, a content section with a left column, a right column, and finally a footer. And again, this is what it looks like. And then we also have a CSS style sheet that's associated with that that provides all the styles for this theme. So as you can see, everything's based on pixels currently. And I'd like to be able to switch that over and actually use M's. Um, by default, an M is roughly about 16 pixels. And that's based on the browser defaults. Um, the average browser has about a 16 pixel height for just default text. And one thing that is often that often people do is they actually resize that down to 10 pixels. Um, basically, we're going to be using a formula to calculate the size in M's. And it sounds a little bit complicated at first, but it's quite easy to pick up. The way you calculate M's is by using a simple formula, target divided by context equals result. So for example, um, Let's say I wanted to size something in th roughly around 30 pixels. And my context, the area where it's in, the parent element, has a, si has a font size of 10 pixels. So then we'd have 30 divided by 10, and the final result would be a 3M size. So I'm going to take that approach, and I'm actually going to put that in place here in the sample template. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add that preset, which will style things down to 10 pixels. That makes our calculations a lot easier. So up here at the top, I'm going to add HTML. And I'm just going to set everything to 16 pixels by default. Um, this gives us a standard size to work with and sort of standardizes things across browsers. And then within the body section, I want to adjust the font size to 62.5%. So that means that our parent element, the body, is going to be 
a 10 pixel font size. And obviously if you take a look at it now, you'll notice things are much smaller. So the next step is we need to adjust the font sizes in the rest of the document to use M's. So let's just go down the document and adjust things as we go. Um, for example, the H1 has a font size currently of 26 pixels. So to convert that to M, it would be 26 pixels divided by the 10 pixel parent element. So we get a 2.6 M final value. And we're pretty much going to do that just throughout the rest of the document. Um, so the H2, rather than being 22 pixels, it'll be 2.2 M. The H3 will be 1.4 M. Um, for the banner element, this is simply something that's removing the line height and removing some of the extra spacing around the banner, um, adjusting for browser inconsistencies. So I'm just going to leave that particular item alone. Uh, but anything that's actually showing text, I want to adjust. Um, the navigation elements, they're currently at 12 pixels, and I'm going to make that 1.2M. And the content itself was at um, 13 pixels originally. So I'm going to adjust that to 1.3M. And finally, the footer is going to be 1.1M. And keep in mind, these values all go back to that base 10 pixel value. Um, this just gives you an easy way to think of M's and sort of associate it with a pixel value. Just it's an easier way to comprehend it. At least I find it easier. Hopefully, you will too. So now that I've saved this, let's go ahead and do a preview. And you'll notice that things are mostly the way I expected them to. But these two headers, this main header and the sidebar header, seem a little bit bigger than I expect them to be. And if you remember back to what I said at the start, that goes back to this target divided by context calculation. The H1, if we take a look at the index.html, um, and it's not the H1 I need to look at, the two headers that I need to look at are the H2 and the H3. You notice that they're both within this content element. And we added, if we go and look at the content element, we added a font size to that. So the context has changed. It's no longer 10 pixels anymore. It's actually 13 pixels based on this value. So we need to adjust our values for the H2 and H3 to fit. So to do that, I'm just going to open up my calculator here. I need to change the H2, that's going to be, we want a final size of roughly around 22 pixels, and we divide that by the context, which is roughly about 13 pixels, and this is the final value we get. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it in place, I'm going to do the exact same thing for the H3 as well. So the, we want the final size to be roughly 14 pixels, and we want to divide that by 13 pixels. So this is the final font size. Copy, paste, save, and there we go. We get a much more consistent header sizes like I was expecting, like the original pixel sizes that we had selected. So that should give you a good overview of M's. It obviously does get a little bit tricky as you have elements nesting within each other. Um, but it's just one of those things you get used to with a little bit of practice. Um, in the next video, we're going to be taking this concept and actually adding on top of it. We're going to be talking about sizing things like padding and margin and widths using M's. So those can be responsive as well. So it's a pretty good idea that you hopefully have a good grasp of this functionality before we continue.